Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. And um, this morning, I just want to um, wish you a pleasant Sabbath day. And we're continuing with, you know, our stories and our experience. We're sharing the experience of what lies ahead for all of us when we surrender to the Holy Spirit. And I want to start by sharing, and it is a little long stories, but it's good to share our experiences because when we share our experiences, then others can be blessed by um what God has been doing in our lives and they can be encouraged. And um, this morning, I want to start off with my own testimony again. So this morning, as I was, I was looking on YouTube for something and um, I just came across this testimony about, oh, God rescued this girl from the sorority, which I've placed on my WhatsApp status. And I don't know why I was drawn to the story because I've not been a part of a, a sorority. I've been a part of academic um like Phi Kappa Phi, and that's absolutely different from sorority, this Alpha, um, Beta, um, Gamma um, sorority. And, you know, the sorority, they pay us lots of money to join this sorority. And recently I am, um, and I, is after I, I listened to the testimony and while I was, you know, getting ready and everything, God has made some sparkable revelation and particularly impressed me to send to this one person and, you know, I was like, okay, God, this person need rescuing, you know, their story. So I just listened and I, I sent it to this one person that I haven't communicated with for a while. And I recognize that God is, God wants to rescue us. And, and it just dawned on me some experience I had recently and how God had even prevented me from joining this sorority, not while in school, but while working in Detroit, while working in Detroit, you know, I, I, as a neuro chaplain, um, I came across these girls from Delta, from the Delta sorority and these guys, and um, they were telling they, their sorority sister, um, I met her in my ICU, and you know, they kept, um, they were just pouring in and their numbers come to look for her. And she was telling me how, you know, cause her family, I didn't even know who her families were. These were just her sorority sisters and brothers. And if she was telling me, you know, um, as she went to this and as, as if, when you listen to that testimony if you're listening from my whatsapp you know she'll tell you that you know you know these because the blacks weren't excluded and sometimes you know when god is when man think they're excluding you from something and you want to be like the rest of the world so you're going to form your own to be like them when god was saving you from stuff you weren't supposed to be a part of in the in the first place and sometimes what man think is excluding you out is god's blessing in your life and I remember coming across them where they were trying to get me to join them and inveigle me to join them and tell me that, you know, and you know what, from the outside, it looks so beautiful to see this girl being loved on by these sorority sisters. And they would come in and, and this can be appealing to people who don't have a lot of support and a lot of friends, you know, and you have to know who you are in God. And, and for me personally, I, people try to always inveigle me to join stuff. And if I don't get an inclination from God to invest in something and other people are making money, I need to go seek God if I'm God wants me to invest as little that I don't have into something. And you see them being blessed and they send you their page with them making 50,000 a week and stuff. And it, it can be in inviting for you to join because when the enemy is recruiting, he shows you these wonderful stuff. And for me, if God, I seek God and if he doesn't, I don't care how much money you are making. If God doesn't impress on my heart to join, I am not joining. I am not. I, don't, I mean, people are trying to get me to do these fire stuff and these different like it makes it like it looks like a susu or partner depending on where you're from and I, I remember looking at the fire wind thing and I'm like this is not the same thing of the partner the partner it's your money you're going in you're saving it you get it back in a quicker it's different and it was also illegal in Michigan and people were trying to get me to join up anyway and I'm like this is illegal I'm not joining these things and so when they were trying to get me to join this delta thing and they were like I mean it looks good I mean when you have a friendship circle who they say they're your friend and they don't really treat you like friend. They treat the rest of the members in the group well and they treat you like nothing. And you're just like the tag along in the friendship group. It might become exciting to you. But to me, I was like, mm -mm, I'm good by myself. I'm pretty good being me. I mean, as a matter of fact, I spent my most of my life being around people and being alone anyway. So for me, that was like... <laughs> Call me alone. And my grandfather would say, you spend too much time living by yourself. And I'm like, well, when I'm in crowd anyway, and I'm always excluded anyway. So um, <laughs> no big deal. You know, a person trying to spite me out of a group is like, <laughs> welcome to me because 
I'm around people anyway, and they always treat me indifferently. I'm in church and they treat me as the odd one out anyway. So no big deal. I'm used to being by myself and I'm happy being by myself. So don't try to spite me by excluding me out of your group or telling me certain stuff because that's like water on a duck's back when it comes to me. So, but there were, there were so many people trying to inveigle me to join different things. And, you know, they were saying stuff that was kind of real in my life. And uh, I, I remember, um, I remember when, um, I might just have to share my testimony this morning and leave it there <laughs> and catch up with you later on with the story I really wanted to share. But this morning when the Lord impressed us on my heart, I didn't even know it was impressed. I knew it was impressing on my heart for somebody else. So I just listened and I shared it. But as I, re as I reflected while I was getting ready, as I was saying, I remember these guys, these girls and these girls tried to invigor me to join. And they were successful. They were successful black people were telling me to live black, buy a black. And I said, I'm all for that as long as it's good customer service, because I'm a pro I'm a purporter of, you know, supporting our race. But I said, the fact is, our business is we, 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 we get egotistic once God sort of bless us and we don't know how to be nice to each other. We know how to nice the lighter skin people and we don't know how to appreciate our own people and our customer service can be much to be desired. So, um, they were telling me, and this girl was sharing with me how these sisters were just loving on her more than her family. And I saw it. I saw it and they were inviting me to join and they gave me their cards and stuff. And I'm like, nah, not into the sorority thing. I said, I am sorority. And you know, I, I'm a purported to the heavenly priesthood and princesses of God. And yeah, I said, I know who I am. I said, I'm a princess Claudia. I'm a princess Vanya. I'm God's child. And I don't need to be the earthly person to recognize that because I do believe that. Because if my father is king of kings and lords of lords, that makes me a princess and nobody can chomp me off the line. And I don't have to wait down the line because we're all equal princesses. And so I prefer my heavenly father and his kingship. And I believe I'm a princess and I know I'm royalty because God says so. And nobody can chomp my royalty because, you know, he's kings of kings and lords of lords. So I am proud to be heavenly royal. And I I, and I, I don't always behave like a heavenly royal. And I'm asking God to keep working on me so I can always look like him. I don't have to be fake with my... um. And, you know, sometimes as Christian, we want to be common goods. And, you know, even as the earthly royals, you see, they can't, they just live plain and can't do certain things. And... And God, the royals, we need to be different. And girls, when you when 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 you are joining these things and and feel that you have to be showing your boobs and your parents are telling you, in some cases, like someone told me up the other day because I spoke up about something, I was telling me, oh, I thought you were different. I said, yeah, I'm different because I'm God's child. I don't need to show my boobs or to dress in skimpy clothes to be beautiful. That is sexy. There's a difference between sexy and being beautiful as a child of God. And it pains my heart to see a young girls trying to be like common goods in the world. And a guy who looks at you and, 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 and when you're looking sexy, not somebody who wants to be your husband, is somebody just want to get under your clothes and to use your goods and to say goodbye after they're finished with you. And then you are scarred for life moving from hand to hand, trying to gain something that you shouldn't want to gain at that stage, only to be damaged and left sometimes with something clicking, someone clicking to your foot with no father to support it. And then you, you're not going to be as beautiful in their eyes anymore. And when they want someone to marry, they're not going to look at you. Mm -hmm. Like some of them call me an opinionated black woman. Mm -hmm. And then I just slap because when the people they choose to get married to, they realize what open native was. <laughs> so, you know, people have their own opinion of you. And, and the point I'm making is you need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. And don't let other people's mouth dictate who you are. When people speak certain things in your life, just undo it. Don't even let it get registered, you know. And one of the things these guys were telling me, and they meant well, they were saying, you know, I can feel you have a positive energy about you and that, you know, God can God want to bless your life. These are the things that were telling me to join into these sorority stuff. And um, I remember this family, um, the the um they were very highly educated and they were being treated indifferently on the on their sister was sick and dying. And um I spent a lot of time caring for them and I get to know them very well. And they were quite strategic black family and they were quite well known and quite in, you know, and they were telling me, you know, and they were into these Delta stuff too. And and, you know, I've had so many opportunities where, you know, the enemy was kind of meeting me with these people while I was working and waiting. Hey, come on. I know you're good stuff. You're good stuff. You're a nice girl. Come on and join us. You know, and I'm like, yeah, I take the cards and stuff and I put them on my desk and that's it. I, and I try to not mix boundaries and friendship and relationship. And I mean, I couldn't, you know, meet people out of, out of, of, of work setting. But if, as I said, if God doesn't encourage you to join some of these stuff, I never, you know, even move. I remember one, 
person told me, um, you know, your church doesn't even know your value. Your, your church abuse you and treat you like common goods. Your church doesn't even know. Your church is stifling God's plan and purpose in your life. And she was, I remember walking to that room and telling, telling God that I was done. I said, God, I've had enough of this foolishness. If you call me, you figure it out because this is not call right now. This is like abuse and I'm done with this abuse. And I, I don't know why I always have to be the bottom of the scale and why people are constantly trampling on me and why I'm constantly fighting with people and why this spiral of stuff in my life. But you know what? I am done because this is not coping because right now my back is knotted up. And if this is not adopt, this is not coping. And you said that you don't bring anything in my life. I said, God, I'm done. And these were stuff I was walking on my unit and I was walking from one section of the age to the next section of the age. And I wasn't verbalizing it. So can you imagine when I walk into this patient room and she was telling me these things and she was saying to me, you know, um, she was having a hard time with the doctors and after I kind of quell her down and we have a conversation and a goddaughter was in the room and she was saying, um, she was saying, um, she was saying to me, you know, she's a prophetess. And I'm like, I smile. And she said, yeah, true, true. She is. I said, I never said she wasn't. As long as she ties up with what the Bible says, you know, I, I don't care where she's from. I, you know, God use anybody and any people. So, and I'm like, as long as I can test her to the Bible, that's cool. So she was like, how to share her life. And this woman was speaking some stuff in my life and she was just reading out my life, like no tomorrow. And I'm like, this is, and this is me. I'm like, started laughing. And I was like, kind of inside I was like this is either God or this is the enemy you know because this woman know my story to the T you know and I'm like okay let's listen to the story and she was just telling my life story she was telling me the stuff my church has done to me and people has done to me and she said you used to spend a lot of time talking to God you used to prostrate before the Lord and she said the only thing you need to do different when you prostrate before the Lord put a white sheet over your head I'm like huh and I, I did that. I prostrate a lot before the Lord. I just let go before him, like I spread out my case before him and just lie down on my face before him, especially on Sunday mornings when I had the most free time. I used to just pray and, and just prostrate before the Lord and just call out on the Lord. And she was telling me stuff, but she said, you don't do that anymore. God missed that time with you. And she was saying, you don't spend enough time as you used to with the Lord. I mean, I used to spend hours in the presence of the Lord. And I know what she was saying was true. And I know my soul was hungering for it. But I also knew I had to be careful who was speaking into my life this morning. I, I think I'm just going to share my testimony and just leave it there because time is running out. And, you know, I, I sat there and she was speaking into my life in some ways, you know. And this woman was just telling me my life like a blanket. And she said, your family and she was telling your friends the people you call your friends they just use you and they trample on you and because of your personality type and she sees these men try to want to cling on to you because they, they like your personality but they don't really like who you are and you know she was talking some stuff and she said your church your church is cramping God's purpose in your life. They're sabotaging you and they constantly sabotage you. She was speaking some stuff and she was just speaking my life story before me. And I'm like, God, this is either you or the enemy, you know, come out to get me. And as she was there talking, I was laughing, but I was talking to God on the inside and I said, God, block anything that's not from you and anything that's from the enemy. I just asked you to block it in the name of Jesus. And I was there, you know, praying and while she was there talking into my life. But I was listening to her because she was talking truth. She was talking my life in truth and in every sense of the word it was. And she was saying, you know, you have so much potential and God has a plan for your life. And the enemy has been just giving you hell, nonstop hell. And it's because God's purpose. And she told me, you know, she said, I saw you writing volumes. And she says, you know, God show you a lot of stuff, you know. God, you have this, you have a spirit in you that you see stuff and God tells you stuff, which is true. And I was saying to the Lord, God, you don't speak to me anymore. I, you, I said, you don't talk to me like you do. You don't show me things anymore. And she was saying, you know, she said, your church has been cramping you and stifling God's calling in your life. And, you know, um, and I was like, God, I will. We already know that already. <laughs> I'm not going to get nowhere with this church. We already know that. I'm not called to this church. I'm called to you. So we were there talking and she said, your friends, the people you call yourself friends, you know, they, they, they don't really care about you. I said, mm, tell me that. I already know that already. They don't, they don't really like me anyway. They just tolerate me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, she was speaking some stuff. You know, she said, people treat you so badly. And, you know, and, and, and you get the raw end of the stick all the time. And I'm like, yeah, that's my life story. Mm, tell me something new. And, you know, she was talking and she said, I see a little baby crawling up the stairs. And then her goddaughter was like, oh, God, what does that mean? And she said, new ministry, new birth. God has a new purpose for this girl's life. And she said, you know what? At the end of all of that, she said to me, why don't you come and join us? You know, we're looking for another female minister. And I, and I remember, I, you know, I, a couple of weeks before that, um, this girl, I met her in the, in the, in the, the, the um, blood sec the center, the clinic. Um, 
flipper to make claim it. And she was like, a pastor all the time, I waved to her and she was like, hey, you know, my pastor's looking for a youth pastor uh, in, in this big church in Detroit. And she said, I think you make you work perfectly well in that center. And I'm like, it's Sunday. I would never, ever join that Sunday church. I'm a Sabbath keeper. I'm a diehardist Sabbath keeper. And um, so as, and at that time, I see a lot of, lot of Sunday churches were interested in me and they were drawing me, trying to draw me into their ministries. And they were like, hey, we have a church for you. Would you want to come and join us? And I'm like, nah, I'm a Sabbath keeper. No, nah, that's all right. And you know, sometimes people come and they come with half truth in your life. And and so when she started to tell me that, you know, they um there were a group of sisters and um not biological sisters, but spiritual sisters, and they meant well, they were trying to they would think that they would I would flourish better under their their tutorship and mentorship since my church was giving me such a hard time. And that's where we parted company, and I'm like, yeah, no, not interested. And sometimes, and the point I'm making is like this testimony. Sometimes, you know, as I listen to the testimony this morning, I, I start to reflect on the many times in Detroit, how I met so many of these different Delta sisters and the different Gamma sisters and whatever their black sorority, one of those nine divine sisters who tried to draw me into one of those sororities, even though I wasn't in their academic world at the time. I was still at Loma Linda, which I'm still at. Um, and I do join honor societies, but it's academic societies. It's different from sorority societies. It has nothing to do with honor clubs. And stuff like that because I'm, I'm a, a Phi Kappa Phi and um, those are all academic um, societies and not sorority societies that's different so I'm not talk I'm talking to our parents and our young people this morning be careful what your children sometimes you push them to and you pay big money for them to join these societies and you're not you're you're feeding their promiscuous lifestyle when you see them start dressing a particular way and getting promiscuous because you want them to excel in the world you let them sell themselves and their values and their worth as God's princesses. And then you keep quiet. And some of you aunties and uncles that are keeping quiet and encouraging these behaviors, or oh, they're young, there's nothing new under the sun, okay? In every society, if you see some of the dresses that my my my, 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 my paternal grandmother, Eva used to wear, and I remember when we were young and we were doing plays in church, they had these thick um, Kremlin kind of material dress, but they were sexy dresses. They, and these little um, collars, and there's nothing new under the sun, these vintage dresses that fits them here and flare off to the knees. They were pretty trendy in their time. So don't fool yourself that because in Bible times, there's nothing. I was listening to Corinthians 14 and 15 this morning, and he was talking about, oh, the church was promiscuous and fornicative. And I'm like, there's nothing new and nothing different. It's the same thing happening today. So there's nothing new under the sun. So I remember somebody saying to me the other day, oh, you're from the Caribbean age. And I was like, oh, because the Caribbean God is different from the, the European God, right? And I'm, and we're so sold and we're so we're so sold into this false and we're selling our young girls and our young men into academia world because we want them to excel. There is no excel without, without God and we're making them smoking and they're drinking and we're keeping quiet while our kids are going to hell, sold to the enemy and the devil. And because we want them to excel and to have status, I want to move ahead in life. But this morning, I want to tell you to encourage them to have a personal relationship with Jesus because you could you could get all you want into this world if you get it the wrong way and not God's way. Unless the watchman, um, God keep that city, the watchman wake in vain. Unless all your academic and your accolades and your stuff is in Jesus, none of it is worth anything. And you parents who are sending your girls out there to look like tramps. Yes, I said it, look like tramps. And their boobs out because you call it sexy and you close your eyes and watch them while they're going astray and because you love them so much. If you really love them, you put them in the way of the Lord and you correct them because who God love, he corrects. And I'm not talking about not being supportive of young people. You can say what you want to say because when God puts something in my heart, he's not going to hold me accountable. And I'm not talking about correcting people and having no relationship with them and not caring about them. Too many of you are smiling while your kids are going astray. Too many are smiling while your nieces and your biological and spiritual nieces are going astray because you want to be their friends and to be comfortable in their shoes. And you're not telling them that the truth that they're going astray. And you're watching while they, when their lives and their livers and their kidneys get packed up, where's the love then? Huh? When they get hurt and abused and are traumatized, where's the love then? When they have to pick up their pieces because they sleep with Tom, Dick, Jane, and Harry, and, and uh, they leave a piece of themselves with every single person they sleep and they become emotionally hurt and, and battered, where are you in their lives? And then you said you were disappointed, disappointed because they make these bad choices. And when the time when they need you and you're supposed to be there and loving them or you don't want to be with them anymore, you're distancing yourself because they don't look 
what you want them to look. We, we've created such a thing in church where we move from one extreme to the next, where we're too conservative or we're too liberal and we have no balance in the middle. Yes, we love people, but it doesn't mean that you tolerate their behaviors. It doesn't mean that you don't love them and tell them when they're wrong. You need to love them enough that you want to see them in the kingdom. I'd rather be in God's hands, as this young girl says. And I want to praise God this morning for protecting me and shielding me from all these sorority stuff. I mean, they want the people trying to <laughs> get me involved in this sorority in Detroit. And I'm like, mm -mm, my God hasn't put that on my heart. Mm -mm, not for me. Because anything that God has impressed me, mm -mm. any get quick, quick, too, money too, quick. Mm -mm, I'm very skeptical about it. And I said, you see me, if I can't go seek God and find peace for this, it's not for me. There's certain things that I even bother ask God about because I didn't feel impressed about it. But too many of us have closed our eyes and allow our children and our loved ones and our young people to be going. We don't talk about these things in churches. And we watch them being promiscuous and you're talking about them at your dinner table instead of loving them and trying to bring them back to the fold. So that is my testimony this morning. I don't even know why God took me to that video this morning, but I know that video wasn't for me, it was for somebody else. And then I just recognized, oh God, I'd rescued me because I, no, I had no intention of talking about any of this morning for devotional. We're still on the personal revival. But when you listen to this girl's testimony, just look up my WhatsApp status and you'll see that testimony of how God rescued this girl from this sorority. You know, you I just started to think about the many times God rescued me from the sorority of all these other things that we get ourselves into. And there's so many of our girls, even some in ministry, who are still in academic, um, some of these sorority that they turn up in high school and your lives are upside down because you're on the devil territory while you're trying to serve God. God wants to set you free this morning. Whatever sorority you're in, whether it's spiritual sorority, whatever it is that's preventing you from having that personal encounter. And as that girl said this morning, we're in church and we're playing church. And too many of us have been faking it for too long. And the reason why we're not making it is because when you're faking it, the fake becomes a reality. And we cannot get the help that God wants for our lives because we have been faking it for too long and the fake has become real. So this is my testimony and my story this morning. And I just want you to um, um, remind you that we're doing trauma coming up. We're almost there. We still have a few chapters to go. And then after that, while we're doing that, I want to encourage you, we're doing this series on um, set me free so if you have a story or you know someone of a story of God setting them free it's just them sharing their story I'm, I'm in the background and just them sharing their story about oh God there's so many people out there looking for a story to save them so share your story and your testimony of how God sets you free and he wants to set someone else free have a blessed day bless bless may the Lord bless you and may you find peace the Sabbath day with him bless bless <music>